Hey guys, it's Renee. Welcome to this baking video. Today we're going to be making this half watermelon cake. The first thing that I need is my cake batter. I do have the recipe on my channel if you want to check it out. But to this batter, before I bake it, I'm going to be adding some gel red food coloring. It's really important for you to work with gel instead of like to liquid because uh, it can change the consistency of your batter. It's pretty much up to you if you want to work with a, let's say, red velvet um, cake batter. But since I'm just working with a batter that is not red, that's why I'm using red food coloring. And how many drops you add, it depends on how red you want your cake to be. Then I'm going to be taking my tipless piping bags. I love them. I do have a review of this ones. If you want to check it out, it's on my channel. I'm just going to fill my piping bags with my batter. I'm going to be baking my cake in this six inch cake pan. Again, this depends on whether you like a small or a big cake. So once my cake is baked to avoid it from sticking to my cake pan, I'm just going to go old fashioned here. I'm just going to be using good old butter and flour to just prevent my cake, you know, from sticking. If you want to use Pam or something else, just go ahead and use it. Or if you're working with a silicone pan, it's pretty much up to you and what you like. And to avoid making a mess, I'm just working over a tray. Just in case something falls, I don't have a mess on my table. When I'm so ready to go, I'm just going to be taking some chocolate chips. These are going to be the seeds of my watermelon, so I'm just going to pretty much add a few um, chocolate chips and then with my tipless piping bag, I'm just going to cover those seeds or chocolate and then I'm just going to smooth the surface with my spatula. Or you can use a kitchen knife, you can use a spoon, doesn't really matter as long as the surface is um, smooth and flat, as flat as you want it to be. Now it's time for the second round, I'm just going to um, do pretty much the same thing. In this case I'm just adding a bit more uh, chocolate chips and again covering those with my batter. So just repeat the same steps until you run out of batter. So I'm just going to be baking this at 350 for about half an hour and voila, it's baked. I'm just going to be using my kitchen knife and I'm just going to be cutting this not all the way through but kind of like in the middle. And this is because I am using my cake leveler so it makes it easier for me to just use the cake leveler if I use a knife before and just cut through the, like the hard part the top part is kind of hard sometimes so that's the way I do it, it kind of helps me through the whole process. So once my top is removed, I'm just going to go ahead and cut my cake in two parts. So right now I'm just going to be using one half and then for my other project for next week, I'm going to be using the other half. And with the leftovers, I just save them, tweet them later if you want to make some cake pops. Um, although I don't think you're going to be able to have many cake pops with this because it's not plenty leftovers. But if you gather a few, you know, you can freeze them and then go ahead and use your uh, leftovers for cake pops but for now this is what I have I'm just going to be taking my cake base and some wax paper this is just uh, so I don't make a mess on the like the final plate I place some tape so my wax paper doesn't move and then I add my wax paper on the top yeah I kind of like wrap it around so it doesn't move it's kind of like easier for me to work this way but everybody has like their own uh, style of doing this but this is another option that you can do and I'm just going to take three bowls and I'm just going to add some whipped cream into them and then I'm just going to start the fun which is the uh, food coloring again I'm just using gel food coloring I'm using tulip red mint green and forest green and this is how I mixed my food coloring on my whipped cream. I'm just going to be moving on and use my tipless piping bags to decorate my cake. Then I'm just going to make small holes. You can use uh, Ziploc bags as well. doesn't really have to be this particular product. You can use anything else that you feel comfy with. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply my whipped cream. I'm not being really precise with the application as you can see, but it's okay. At the end, everything is going to come together. I'm just going to add my second shade of green on the parts that I felt like I needed to add something. And yeah, it's pretty much up to you if you want to go like more uh, light green or darker. 
Then I'm going to be taking some spatula and some water and I'm just going to smooth the whole surface. I'm just going to soak my spatula into the water and just that's going to be helping me to smooth the whole surface. And then I'm just going to go all the way around this part of my watermelon and I'm just going to blend it until I feel like the colors look nice. Kitchen knives work, they are not going to give you as uh, smooth result as spatula gives you. They are not expensive at all, they are super affordable. Nowadays you can find them pretty much everywhere. As a recommendation, it's going to be easier for you to work with this kind of things if you're really into cakes and you want to, you know, go for this. I'm just going to be moving on to the red part. A lot of people use a crumb coat that is like the first coat that secures all the crumbs so when you are decorating no crumbs will affect the final result of your frosting but when I use and this tip less spectrum bags I don't really feel the need to use a coat before my decoration so that's why I just go directly with my um, piping bag like that and then on the top I'm just going to add the white like kind of like the edge that watermelons have I kind of forgot to add that part next to the red where I just had added the red but nothing really happens you can do it later so I'm just going to be taking some water one smaller spatula I'm just going to smooth my white bits or like the white part that I just added and then I'm just going to be taking my red whipped cream and I'm just going to go to the top part and pretty much fill that space as you saw me doing before And then doing the thing with the water and the spatula, I'm just going to smooth the whole thing. And it's kind of like adding butter to your bread in the morning, like making a toast. If you want like a smoother or just even perfect uh, surface or frosting, you may want to try something with shortening or just something else. You know, whipped cream is not going to be hardened. It's not going to be like super perfect. But yeah, that's what I'm doing here. And then to finally decorate it so it looks like a, an actual watermelon or kind of, I'm just going to be adding my seeds. We could say I'm just going to be adding my chocolate chips randomly, pretty randomly. And it's pretty much up to you how many you add. Just keep in mind how watermelons are in real life. Since I am using chocolate chips and they are kind of like bigger than actual seeds, I'm not going to be adding too many. I'm just going to add a few. And then to actually decorate this thing, I'm just going to be kind of like plating a base like that with some doilies. And I'm just going to remove my cake from my cake board. And I'm just going to, with my two hands, carefully to remove it from the wax paper. So that's actually why I use the wax paper. So all the mess stays in the wax paper. And maybe you don't really need the tape on the back but that's kind of like something I do maybe you just need the one on the front kind of like personal preference but yeah, I just want to share this idea perfect for summer if you want to add like a watermelonish flavor to it just add some watermelon flavor to the frosting or whipped cream and then you're good to go flavor is really good my cake recipe is really good real hope you liked it if you did don't forget to give me a thumbs up it helps a lot don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more stuff more baking stuff and diys that i do on my channel as well and share it thank you so much for watching and i'll talk to you later happy baking guys bye